Hello, and thank you for tuning into the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and we are moving right along with the year. It is in June now. Man, time is flying. There are four of the six episodes of Obi Wan out already. I've only seen three. I got to get caught up, man. I've been busy. Um, <clears throat> for those who don't know, I have just taken a trip working out of the uh, Savannah area, Savannah, Georgia, little downtown action. I uh, just put up a room review for the Hilton Garden Inn in the historical downtown district of Savannah. Um, it ended up where I could go down there and work to help out. And there was a uh, pizza place that's nearby that I try to go to anytime I'm in the area. It's called Vinnie Van Gogo's. They make really traditional New York style pizza. The great big slices, you know, the they make them in the great big pies and then they cut them in giant slices and Usually one or two slices is all anybody can eat. Uh, a lot of times it's just one and I'm done. But when I was down there, I ordered a piece and it was good. And I was, I got done. I was thinking, man, that was good. I'm, I'm full now. I can go back to the room. And right about then it started, it started really thunderstorming. And I was like, well, I don't want to walk across the way in the rain. And I feel sort of guilty sitting here taking up a seat. And I, I could eat another piece. So I ordered a second piece of pizza and... It was quite delicious. Uh, big shout out to Vinny Van Gogo's. Uh, really fantastic pizza. If you're ever in Savannah, make sure you stop by there and check them out. Uh, tell them Josh at uh, Stuff I Heard Podcast I sent you. Um, but yeah, so I stayed at Hilton Garden Inn. It was a nice hotel. Uh, very comfortable. Um, the only thing, I guess the only complaint I had about the whole experience was the fact that the valet was expensive. Uh, we just got back from Universal Orlando, and the last podcast I put out, episode 361, I talked about Orlando Informer and you know going to the extended hours pass in the park and how disappointed I was in our experience. But one of the things about staying was we stayed at the Sapphire Falls Resort, and we had access by boat from the resort to Universal City Walk. They do the baggage check there so that when you go through, you don't have to do it at the park, which is very convenient. Um, something I really wish that Disney had gotten on top of. But it is a nice hotel. But the valet there is $33. Now, it costs to park anywhere nowadays. Any place that you go is going to cost you. If you self-park, it's like a $5 difference in price. And it's like, okay, but then if I self-park, where do I park? How do I get to a parking place from where I'm at? How do I get my stuff inside? You know, it just turns into a big circus. So $5 difference. You're like, all right, I got to pay this anyway, no matter where I go. So might as well just pay it. But why is Savannah $42 when Universal is 33? Why is it so much more expensive when it's not as big a draw is it that space is more limited is it that they just don't plan for it is it that they figure you're here now you're gonna have to pay it anyway so haha i gotcha is it a gotcha i mean i'm really concerned that it's a gotcha because there's a lot of gotchas out there yet if you notice if you ever go anywhere nowadays and you go to pay somebody there's always a tip button no matter what it is the other day we went to a place in north myrtle beach and we were getting some uh some, some custard, frozen custard ice cream for, you know, better terms. Um, literally going in line. Yes, I'd like this, please. Okay, you just got to tap here. They wanted like a, like a percentage tip for doing their job. Like not just, not just doing the job, taking the order and giving it to you. I mean, this is crazy. Um, no, I don't want to give you a tip for standing there doing the job that they pay you to do. On top of the fact that what, how much time do we exchange with each other? 30 seconds? Maybe that long for me to go, yes, I'd like this. Okay, maybe 15 seconds. 15 seconds of time out of your busy day for me to tell you this is what I'd like to order. And you want to, you, you have a tip involved in that. No, no, I'm good. Matter of fact, at the valet where it was $43, no tip. You didn't get any bags for me. You didn't do anything. You did your job. You went and got the car and you brought it back. How is that worth $42 a day? I mean, seriously. 
It's just, it's mind numbing to me how nickel and diming the entire world is getting. Everything that you do, everybody's got their hand out for, hey, by the way, you going to give me some money? Because that's what this is all for. This is why we're here. Forget the fact that I'm getting paid a salary, but you should, you should give me more. You should, you should, you should pony up there, boy. Pony up. So when is it enough? When do we stop? Right now, gas prices are continuing to climb pretty much all over the United States. It's hitting $5 a gallon or more. I follow Burt Kreischer's, uh, he has the Burt cast in Two Bears, One Cave, stand-up comedian. You guys know, I talk about him a lot. Um, <laughs> his sound engineer, Halston Ray, posted on Instagram the other day. He stopped at a, a gas station to get gas for his for his car. Gas is over $7 in Southern California. $7 a gallon. Now, here's the crazy thing. is I hear reports and see stuff online about how the United States play, pays the least amount per gallon than pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, and I know that South Carolina is lower in taxes than a lot of other states, but still, it's ridiculous what we're paying for fuel. Now, with that being said, it's not slowed down, from what I can tell, anyone from doing the things that they were doing before the prices went up. I just went to Myrtle Beach because we had plans. A friend of ours had a condo at the beach. They said, come down, hang out. We did bumper to bumper traffic all the way there and back. And every single one of those vehicles is paying that and just trucking right along. Now, I can't help but think about the fact that there was a time in my life where I was literally having to buy groceries with a credit card to just limp through until maybe my income tax check would allow me to pay that back because I couldn't afford daily expenses. What's happening there? I mean, there is a group of people, I used to be one of them, in a, in a certain bracket of income that you don't make enough to survive. Are we just making the gap bigger? And who's responsible for the fuel prices? Is it the government? Is it taxes that we're putting on this fuel? I mean, does anyone know outright how much money is being just given on top of the, the pile to the heads of Exxon and Mobil and BP and Shell. I mean, I just saw a thing on the internet recently, because this is the stuff I heard podcast, not stuff I know, but stuff I heard. I just saw a thing on the internet recently that said that all of these heads of these uh, fuel companies were getting double digit trillion dollar bonuses because of how much money they were making right now. What? So the level of greed has gotten to that point. Now, usually whenever there's a problem, the solution is always the same. Follow the money, right? Follow the money. So where's the money coming from? Where's the money go to? Are these the people that helped elect presidents? Are these the people who, who help elect politicians, who lobby, who get things pointed in their direction so that they can continue to make money and so that we all suffer? Or, or is it that we are so ingrained in the idea that energy costs should not go up just because inflation of everything else goes up? Are we just conditioned to think that fuel prices should always stay at a certain rate? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Is this the government trying to push us towards buying electric vehicles? Because I got to tell you, there's a lot of people that used to, used to talk trash to me about, uh, when I'd say I was into buying a, a Tesla one day, they were always, you know, ah, yeah, that's a terrible idea. Now they're like, eh, maybe not a bad idea. Is this the push? Is this the influence? Is this the big master plan of the pe dot people in charge going, mm -hmm, we're going to get them to switch one way or another, buddy? I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out the truth, though. I mean, I'm sure it'll be long after I'm gone, but the truth will come out eventually. And they'll look back at this time in history and they'll go, Man, that was a gutsy move they made, but it either A, paid off, or B, was a huge mistake, right? I mean, only history will tell. So I'm hoping as a father, as a parent, as a uh, husband, as a friend, as a thoughtful human being, as much as I'd like to think I am, 
I'd like to be on the right side of history here. And I'd like, I'd like to plan and make a decision and get on the right side before the, the, the curve turns. Right. So what is the right move? Does anybody know? If you've got suggestions, please let us know here at www.stuffiheard.com or stuffiheard.com, stuffiheardpodcast at gmail.com. Um, be part of the discussion. Give me some feedback. Let us know on the YouTube channel, whichever. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think. Um, <laughs> so, anywho, I, um, I did have a chance to go back while I was working out of town. And, uh, and I watched the, uh, I don't know what you call them, the latest Star Wars movies, the ones that had Ray in it and Kylo Ren, uh, the second one and the third one. I got to watch those over again. And I actually haven't seen them in a while. And, uh, and I still like them. I mean, I know people were pissed off that Disney bought Star Wars and they were like, oh, they're ruining the franchise. Listen, shut up. <laughs> I like the content. I like all the content. It's great. It's great. I'm enjoying everything. Um, <laughs> I was able to, uh, you know, get my grandson involved in watching this stuff. And uh, he's super excited about it. And uh, I'm really liking watching the animated series Rebels again with him. Um, I watched him by myself and really enjoyed it. And now that I'm watching it with him, I'm able to point out some things that maybe he doesn't know. And he's excited about it, which makes me excited about it. And listen, I get the fact that I'm a 48 year old man wearing Star Wars t-shirts telling you guys about Star Wars crap that I like on a podcast, but just know I don't care if you don't like it. Okay. I like it and my friends like it. And if they don't like it, they at least humor me enough to get me to where I'll shut up and go move on to something else. So anyway, um, I would like to talk about my trip to Myrtle beach. We stayed in North Myrtle beach and we went, um, Danny and I, Danny Shaw and I, he's been on the podcast before. Um, he's been to the Jeep meets and stuff like that with me. Uh, he's the guy with the big Jeep. We went to this place called K1 Sports or K1 Racing. I think it's K1 Racing. It's electric race cars, uh, go-karts inside of an old shopping center. So there's a bylo that used to be open in North Myrtle Beach, um, right off of 31 or 31 and nine dump into 17. Anyway, um, they've converted it and there's an indoor racing track and they have electric go-karts that look like little indie cars. They're super fast. Um, they can control the speed. They can, um, adjust things inside so that you're comfortable with your foot pedals and your, your, um, steering wheel and all of your safety harnesses and such. And, uh, you know, I walked in and, and I thought, man, this is going to be fun. I can't wait. I'm a little nervous. We walked in and right away we could see these little kids racing and they must've been, they looked preteen. They look like 12 and younger, maybe 12, maybe 12, you know, 10, 12, 11, somewhere in that range. Um, and there was this one kid, Jeremiah, and he was burning it up, man. He was passing people and lapping people and we were cheering him on as he went by and he was giving us the thumbs up when he went by. He's having a blast. And I was like, man, I want to do this. And then I saw a sign that says no open toe shoes. And I thought, oh, crap, I only brought my flip flops. That's not going to be great. And I was like, I just do. I do. I go buy shoes just to do this thing. And uh, and Danny's like, wait, I got an extra pair of shoes. Let's go back to the house. So we went back to the condo, got some got some shoes. They happened to fit. We come back, signed up and we went racing. Um they do they have to do 12 laps uh, and you're not racing each other per se. You're racing t the time on the board. So you're trying to get the best time, the best lap. And uh, it is exciting. Um, I am glad that for a living, I do physical work. So my forearms and my arms are pretty good shape. And so I'm able to grip the handle really well. The, the handlebars is kind of a racing uh, style steering wheel. It's got uh, two uh, grips on either side and you, you know, you're turning it like this and, and it's, it's got some force. They're, they're pretty quick and I'm kind of a big guy. I'm, you know, around 250 pounds. So for me going into the corners, I could feel the weight kind of pushing me as I'm trying to turn. I could hear the tires going, burp, 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 you know, kind of skidding a little bit. And uh, I would slide a little bit sometimes if I went into the corner too hot and I realized 
like the first race we got in, they they just put us out there and they were like, all right, we're just going to see how you guys do. He told the other guys, look out for these two. This is the first time. And it was all we could do to stay out of their way because they were super fast. Well, Danny and I went around, had a great time doing it. Um, but we got back and we were like, okay, let's do it again. And he was like, all right, I'm going to put you guys with some, with some less experienced drivers, um, and just run like four or five of you at a time. That way you can get a better feel for it. And I was like, oh yeah, that sounds good. So we went back out there and the second race was really good because somehow I wrapped my head around the fact of he did say race the track, don't race each other. And I thought, okay, stop focusing on the other drivers. And I just focused on trying to get my best lap. So as I was approaching corners, I was approaching them differently. I was trying to cut in close. I was trying to swing out wide before, um, you know, power through that kind of thing. And I was really focused on getting the smoothest ride around the track. Now, you know, as a guy who's 48, I've played lots of video games and there's been a lot of racing games that I've really enjoyed. Um, in them, I've learned a few tricks. Sometimes you could pick the slowest car and pick up the best handling and you could literally stand on the gas pedal the entire way, even around all the corners. And you would post a better time than someone who had the fastest car because they couldn't seem to control it. Their control just wasn't there. And I thought, maybe this is the mentality I got to have. So I started approaching the corners as smoothly as I could and opening up when I had room and just trying to get used to the force of it. Um, it is exciting. The second race was really educational for me. I posted a really good time. So did Danny. They said, you know, we got done with that. They said, all right, you guys have moved up. We're going to put you back in this other class with these other guys. Um, you're still not at their level yet, but you're pretty close. So, you know, he's like, I'm going to have you guys in the back of this group, but, uh, you know, I think you're going to be okay. So we did that group again. And of course they lapped us, but it was still, uh, <laughs> it was still good. I mean, as fast as the other guys were, when we got our little printout sheet, it showed that, that, uh, they were only like 0.7 seconds faster, but you're thinking, yeah, but 0.7 seconds on a track that, you know, takes 21.4 or 22.1 uh, seconds to go around. You're like, wait, but how are they so much faster? And it's that that small of a margin. Well, that's kind of how it goes. Uh, <laughs> that's the difference. That's the trick of racing is it is by fractions. Um, sometimes it's just the way somebody can get in and out of a corner. It could be their physical weight. It could be their driving ability. It could be the condition of the track or the tires or the vehicle itself. I mean, the last race that we raced, the steering wheel on mine was a little bit jittery. Like it just, it had a little more play in it than the one in the first race. Uh, so that could have been the, the equipment could have also just been my nerves. Um, I was a little nervous going with up against those guys, but I still beat Danny. So ha <laughs> it's all about small victories. Um, I know it sounds silly, but I just wanted to beat Danny. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, we had a blast doing it. We had a great day at the beach. Um, my wife and her friends went out and did a little bit of shopping. Uh, we were able to hang out at the ocean for a while and, uh, we all got good and, and, uh, covered with our suntan lotion stuff. So we didn't get burned. Um, I hate putting all that stuff on, but it does make a huge difference. It is nice to spend the day out there and not come back and be sunburned. So had a great day. Every time we go to the beach, we think, oh man, we need to do better equipment so that we can carry stuff out here and it not be such a hassle. And every time we talk about it, we just don't do it. And then we get back and we're like, ah, oh, we should fix that thing. And then we don't because we get distracted with other things. And that's just how life is. So um, I guess if there's a lesson in all that, it's if you have something to do, try to take care of it ahead of time. And when you have nothing going on, that's the time you should be planning for the thing that's going to need your attention. Um, we got back today and I had a lot of grass to cut and I thought I got to do it now because I know I'm going to be busy for next week and the weather's going to be even hotter. We're getting into the hundred degree days. This is the time of the year where basically at work, we just try to, um, we just try to survive. <laughs> it is a hot physical job. And I'm in safety. So I'm all the time telling guys, you know, make sure that you hydrate, make sure you stretch, 
um, you know, you do have to push yourself because it's a physical job, but you know, you're like, okay, you know, you have limits, like try to try to do the job, but also drink a lot of water. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. Anywho, anywho, I'm getting excited. There's another trip that's coming up. Uh, Burt Kreischer's fully loaded comedy festival. It is coming around all through the area in June. Um, I'm getting excited. There's more and more people being added to the roster all the time. Uh, from my latest, from what I heard, there's about 12 comedians now with the potential of several other big names to pop in at any moment. So I think that I got a, a, a fantastic ticket for 50 bucks a piece for a show that's going to be worth 10 times that. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. Uh, if you have a chance to go see this tour, go check it out. Some of the top comedians uh, in the world are going to be on this tour. All of them have Netflix specials. All of them are on YouTube. All of them have podcasts. All of them are friends. It's going to be great. It's going to be so great. So anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. This is going to be a short one. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been listening. Thank you to all the comments. I really appreciate it on the last podcast. Um, a lot of people had a lot of good feedback. I was, I was sort of afraid that, um, that my opinion was going to piss off a lot of people. And, and actually I got a lot of feedback from people saying that they agreed with what I was saying on that. So thank you for that. Um, it was just my honest feedback. And, and that's what I try to do. I try to give you my honest opinion. And I realize that, you know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but Hey, sometimes you just got to drink tea. You know what I mean? All right. So thank you. Um, Y'all take care. Please reach out and uh, let us know what you think of the podcast. Uh, please give us a rate review and, and subscribe. Tell your friends. And if you want to be part of the podcast and talk about some of this stuff, let me know. I can talk about pretty much anything. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Talk to you later. Cue the cow. So I want you guys to give me more likes. Give me more likes.